Proverbs 4 verse 23 says, Keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flow the springs of life. What does that verse mean? And how do we practically do that? Well, today we're going to talk about that as we review the Puritan book by John Flavel, Keeping the Heart, How to Maintain Your Love for God. So stay tuned. What is the main point of this book? Well, this book is all about Proverbs 4, verse 23. Keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flow the springs of life. If that verse is true, think about it, then your heart determines everything. It determines your actions, your thoughts, your responses to situations, etc., etc. Your heart is the source of all your deeds and your actions. And therefore, the most important spiritual discipline that you can practice as a Christian is to obey Proverbs 4 verse 23, to keep your heart. Yet, how many of us know what that means? And, and how many of us really know what is going on inside of our hearts? And that's what this little book is all about. It's an exposition of Proverbs 4 23, and then it applies it to the various areas and seasons of our lives in which we need to keep and protect our hearts. So, in fact, this is Flavel's work on what true Christianity really is. And the book was first published as A Saint Indeed. And this is how the Puritans defined real and true Christianity. Um, J.I. Packer writes in the introduction, Puritans as a body defined real Christianity precisely in terms of communion with God. More precisely still, communion with the triune Lord through Jesus Christ, the mediator. So that's how the Puritans defined true Christianity, communion with God. And here's a one sentence summary of what what it means to keep your heart. Um, Jaya Packer again writes in, in, in the introduction. He says, the practice of admonitory meditation, that's a phrase that summarizes keeping out, admonitory meditation, he says, is in effect talking to oneself before the Lord, reminding oneself of truths about the ways of God and the grace of Christ that will energize and stabilize one for a return to and continuance on the path of faithfulness no matter what. So admonitory meditation, to talk to oneself about the Lord. And here's Flavel's um, summary of this phrase, keeping the heart. In page 14, he says, By keeping the heart, understand the diligent and constant use of all holy means to preserve the soul from sin, that's the negative, and maintain its sweet and free communion with God, that's the positive. So gracious souls are careful to prevent the breaking loose of the corruptions in time of temptation, careful to preserve the sweetness and comfort they have got from God in any duty. So that's what it means to keep your heart from sin and to maintain your sweet communion with God. That's what it means. Is this easy? Of course not. This is a, a lifelong task that we need to do as Christians. So the main application of the book, um, he writes at the very end in page 111, reader Methinks I shall prevail with you. All that I beg for is this, that you would step aside oftener to talk with God and your own heart, that you would not suffer every trifle to divert you, that you would keep a more true and faithful account of your thoughts and affections, that you would seriously demand of your own heart at least every evening, O oh my heart, where hast thou been today? And what has engaged thy thoughts? So it's to, to keep an account of your thoughts, your affections, where they are, and to bring it back to the Lord. Personally, the way I've applied this book is by the habit and the practice of journaling. I find journaling uh, an easy way to keep an account of my thoughts and my affections. So in my journal, I write where my heart has been, what is troubling me, the sins that I've been committing, and I'm laying it open before the Lord and I'm searching the scriptures for answers. So if, if, if you, I think if you do that one discipline, I think it will be much easier to keep an account of your heart and to keep it for the Lord. Um, the structure of the book, um, first his introduction, actually he gives the, the exposition of Proverbs 4.23. Then chapter one go, is about what keeping the heart presupposes and requires. There he expands on how to do this great task, which we will do in our walkthrough next week. And then reasons to keep the heart, chapter two, how to, um, reasons why we should keep heart. And then chapter three, this is the main body. It's, I would say almost 75% of the book is just chapter three. And this is all the different seasons of life in which you need to be more vigilant to keep your heart. Um, 
and he, he lists 12 seasons. So if you'd like to see any of these seasons in our walkthrough next week to see how you can keep your heart in them, please comment in the section below that, we, that I can consider including it into the PowerPoint and our walkthrough. So the first season is prosperity. Second, poverty. Personal suffering, when we are suffering. General opposition to the church, when the church is being persecuted as a whole. Personal persecution for Christ. Then he also says worldwide calamities like COVID-19 and things like that. Season of duty, the time we need to pray and read our Bibles. When receiving injuries or abuses from men. So when people hurt us and how do we respond to that? Great trials, very similar to personal suffering as well. And then the hour of temptation, the hour of temptation, um, a time of doubting, spiritual darkness, and when we are close to death and dying. In all these seasons, he says, we should be more vigilant to keep our hearts. And then the last chapter, he talks about improving and applying the subject, which he gives more motives and more reasons to do this great work. So here's my critique of this book. The strength of the book, the Puritans have been called the doctors of the soul, and I agree they want they they don't just deal with the symptoms they go to the heart of the matter um, no pun intended they don't just deal with the symptoms of our lives they really go to the motives the thoughts the intentions the beliefs of our hearts and then they deal with that and that's what i find so helpful that's what i find so helpful from this book is that they really give you a a biblical counsel and that's my second point is this is a, like a mini library or a mini treasury of biblical counseling. If you'd like to know how to counsel now, how to counsel yourself, how to deal with others who are in some of these seasons, then this is a great book. And weaknesses of the book, um, he starts and ends the book with reasons and motivations to keep your heart, which might have been better as one chapter. But then also my uh, the book is a bit overwhelming. And, and I think this is a, maybe a weakness of, of maybe all of the Puritan books. Um, for example, the Puritans were very scattered. Like they would give like under one point, they would give 14 points. And then under point three, there's another five points. And point number two is, so it's it feels like a labyrinth of points. But just to say as well, I think that might be more a critique of our modern era than it is about the Puritans. They were very um, thorough in their thinking, but it might be just a very difficult read. So you can't read it in one sitting. Don't try. You have to read it slowly. Um, almost like a devotional every morning. Um, that That's a good way to read the book. My recommendations, and as I've mentioned, I think this book is great for pastors, for counselors, for mature Christians to, to help other Christians in these seasons. I think this is a great book to buy, to know how to deal with those different seasons in your lives. But also I want to say, I do recommend this book for all Christians of all um, stages in their lives. Although difficult read, I believe this might go a long way to help you to love the Lord with all your heart and to love your neighbor as yourself, to keep your heart um, for God. I hope you've enjoyed this book review. If you have, remember you can support our channel and our work by simply liking this video, sharing the video, um, checking out our website where you can download some of the PowerPoints that we use in our book walkthroughs and even watching our other videos and our other book reviews and walkthroughs. But until next time, God bless.